It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. You know, a few weeks back, I had Milton Bartley, the CEO and co-founder of a company called ImageQuest LLC, headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee. And when he was on the show, we talked about his fantastic IT services company. And a lot of people reached out to me and said, Ray, how many salespeople does ImageQuest have? I mean, how in the world are they doing $6 million a year in reoccurring services revenue? And they're going to do about $9 million in total revenue. How are they doing that? How many salespeople do they have to do it with? So I thought, you know what? Let me get Jay Mallory. And Jay Mallory is Executive Vice President of Business Development at ImageQuest. And we're going to have a conversation about the sales processes at ImageQuest LLC. And hopefully my friends, especially my friends in the Document Imaging channel, can learn some. Jay, how are you doing, buddy? It's great to see you again. Great to see you, Ray. How are you today? Man, I'm doing fine. And you know that, that story I shared with Milton about your business is phenomenal. Congratulations to you and all the team there in Nashville and Louisville. You guys are knocking it out of the park. And you're creating a lot of uh, questions. You know, you came out of the print industry. This is what's interesting about ImageQuest, folks. You know, Jay Mallory himself came out of the print industry. Milton Bartley came out of the print industry. And you know what? When I was with Milton for two years, I came out of the print industry. So the reality of it is print industry people can pivot and sell IT services extremely successful. But how the hell are you doing it? Because if you look inside the channel today, there's not a whole lot of success stories to talk about. Well, it's a good question, Ray. Um, we don't have... Uh, a lot of salespeople at ImageQuest, as you know, Milton and I are the only salespeople uh, in the company. Um, we are going back to our copier days. We're the hunters okay. at ImageQuest, and then we have uh, four account managers that uh, work with our with our customers after we bring them on board. Um, and going back to our old days again, Ray, right they're, they're the farmers at ImageQuest. So here's the deal: you got seventy accounts. And those 70 accounts were built over a long period of time. I mean, eight, nine, ten years. Sure. And you have four technology account managers that help manage those accounts. But for the most part, there's been two salespeople promoting all that net new business. Now, let me ask you a question. Sure, you and Milton go out, you farm, you guys have great marketing strategies, and you're looking for the right persona. We talked about that a little bit with Milton. But after you get the account, there's also a lot of revenue that goes inside those accounts on a continuous basis. I mean, that's one thing about IT services. You do add additional revenues, additional services to those accounts over their term. So how are you doing that with these TAMs? And why is it so successful when we see a lot of the transitional people in the copier industry trying to do this really failing at it? What's the secret sauce to get TAMs to sell and move services over products inside those accounts? Well, I mean, first of all, you have to be methodical about your account reviews with your customers. I mean, some of our accounts we meet with as much as monthly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our customers that are larger, that are adding new locations, adding uh, new employees that are, that are, that are constantly changing. But um, you, have to, you have to be methodical about the account reviews. You have to be systematic about it. You have to ask the right, you have to ask the right questions around their business and where they're going as a business. Mm -hmm. You can't be... You can't be product focused, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, th that's how we that's how we stay successful. Um, just continuing to add on, you know, new services uh, for our clients. We're we're very methodical. We uh, we understand our stack. Our account managers understand the stack. Uh, they understand how that would benefit a client, and uh, it's it's just worked well for us, right? Well, let me ask you a question. If those account managers, when they're going into these accounts, and, and obviously if they're going to add revenue, they're bringing additional revenues to the company, how do you comp them on that? Do you comp them on the products they sell? Do you, I mean, what's, what's the strategy there? Well, <laughs> we, we used to. Mm -hmm. We used to, we used to uh, pay our account managers on, uh, on hardware sales and project sales. We made that change. We changed that um, really when I started. Mm -hmm. and, and now they are... Um, they're paid with their salary, and then they are bonused on the profitability uh, of ImageQuest. So they get a quarterly bonus based on uh, the profitability of the organization. Well, that's interesting. And what that, I'm sorry, and, and let, me, let me add to that, you know, if you're, it's kind of self-serving. If, if I'm paying my reps to sell hardware, yep. but in the best, the best interest of my customer, that they need to move to the cloud, which includes no new hardware, um, that can be self-serving, right? Sure. So uh, we, we made that, we, we changed that model, um, I, I think about four years ago. 
Well, that's a good thing to change because I think that's one of the biggest problems with the imaging channel making this transition. You know, we always say that behavior, the way you're paid creates the behavior. And, you know, if you've got an account sure. that's going to move a whole bunch of devices to the cloud and they don't need them anymore, or they're going to move their server to the cloud instead of buying a new server. So that's a big motive. So basically, ImageQuest looks at the profitability of the, of the whole entire company, and you do that on, mon on a monthly basis, and then you they have some kind of a share program with those TAMs. That's pretty cool. So they, they really can't get greedy. They can't do things that are unprofitable. So you know, a lot of times in, in sales, we could sell something that might not be the best interest of the company. We see it all the time in the imaging channel. You know, We rob Peter to pay Paul constantly. So how is that... Sure. Let me ask you a question. So if I have an account, let's take a typical, typical account and a typical ImageQuest account, and Milton shared this with us when he was on the, on the show not too long ago, but the average service revenue is about $7,000 for your core customers. So you know, $7,000 a month in services, and they're adding services and additional maybe software applications or even some hardware products. Is that just continuous? I mean, do you see that? How much of that's going into those accounts over that three-year period of time? From a it's a good question. I don't know. I don't have the exact percentage, right? Um, but I will say out of every account review that we have, we come out of there with an action item of something, uh, whether it is a, a project or whether it's some type of, a, of an enhanced service that we're going to be adding mm -hmm. uh, for that client. I mean, you know that we work with a lot of regulated industries. So, you know, uh, cybersecurity, and compliance is, is top of mind with those folks. So we are we are just constantly asking the questions around around security, uh, around compliance, and how can we make sure that we are bringing tools to our clients that help them you know help them reach reach those goals. Well, you know when you focus on the client, when you focus on being customer centric, you always you always win in the long run. It's, it's when you focus on the products we already had that conversation. But yeah, yeah you know, it's it's really it's a it's a great story from an IT perspective, you know. So let me ask you a question. So you spent some time in, in the copier business, you worked for a dealer, then the dealer was bought by a manufacturer. So obviously you've seen it firsthand where where the industry's trying to change and pivot into IT services. What's the one bit of advice you would give our friends from doing both? I mean, you, you saw it in, in a dealership, you saw it inside a manufacturer. You know, why are they struggling so hard with this? Well, I, I think going back going back to, to my days, um, you know, I, I think from that industry, we view everybody as a customer, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody, let's go up, let's take a shotgun approach, let's get a territory, let's go call on, let's go call on every every prospect, and um, you know, let's go call on every customer, and let's introduce uh, let's introduce IT to them. Yeah. I think you have to take a step back, Ray. I think you have to identify first of all what your offering going to be from an IT perspective, what your stack. Mm -hmm. um, and what's your value proposition? And then you have to go out and identify where does that fit? Um, you can't be all things to all people in this industry. If, if you do, um, you, you're going to fail. You can't be a managed services provider. Oh, and by the way, um, I, I'll provide an hourly rate. Oh, and by the way, you need a firewall. And by the way, you need no migration. You can't do all those things. You can't be all things to all people from a, mm -hmm. from a, from a, a sales perspective as well as a, you know, supporting them. Uh, from uh, from our internal folks that, that support our clients, so that's just a recipe for disaster. I think really thirdly is you have to give um, you got to hire the right skills person number one, but you got to give them some time to build a pipeline, build a funnel, uh, build a pipeline of the right clients that you're that you're you're working toward. This is a long sales cycle. Uh, this is not I've got a 36 month no interest you know lease rate. It's going to end today. Yeah. Uh, you better sign today and let me uh, get that piece of equipment delivered by the end of the month. Uh, that's not the way it works. It's 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 trust. It's building a relationship, and it is a much much longer sales cycle. And I think where um, some of the uh, uh, the companies that are trying to get into this get short sighted and looking at their salespeople going, well, they haven't sold anything in sixty days. Uh, let's pull the plug on. Let's go find another sales rep. Mm -hmm. And you just can't take that approach uh, as it relates to IT services. Well, it sounds to me like once you understand the persona of the customer, first of all, you got to understand what the hell you're going to deliver. And I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of these folks, they, they do. They sell all these one-offs, and by the time they install it, do the project that's available for it, you just lose sure. your money. 
And I know that you guys are big Paul, disciple, Paul Dipple disciples. You know, I was too. And, he, he, you know, his philosophy is you better understand what you're going to deliver. And then you build a factory to deliver that and really stay tuned to that. But, you know, when you do the one-off. So let me ask you a question. So at ImageQuest, you would never do a project for someone that wasn't a customer. Is that true? That is true. So if I, if I just called up ImageQuest and said, hey, I want to move this particular platform to this particular platform, will you guys come and do that? And even if that was a $100,000 application, you're really not going to do it if that's all you're going to get out of it. I mean, right. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Um, I would refer that to someone else who does that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if that's your if that's your offering and that's, that's your value add and that's what you do and you stay in your lane, then that's okay. There's, there's thousands of different ways to deliver IT. Mm -hmm. And we all know that, Ray. We just, ImageQuest has picked our lane and, you know, we, we stay in our lane. Well, that's the most important thing. I think the most important piece of advice for the whole entire imaging channel. Once you decide what you're going to do and what lane you're going to be in, you better stay in it. You know, I think back to the, you know, when I first met Milton for the very first time in, in Nashville at his, at his company, we were actually at, a, at one of his big private schools he was doing business with. And we were in the, I was in the server closet with him and the superintendent walked up and said, hey, Milton, by the way, we want to go ahead and move forward with those production print machines. Now, keep in mind, Jay, I'm a copier guy. <laughs> I'm learning right. about IT with Milton. The superintendent comes in and says, hey, by the way, Milton, we want to move forward with those two big production copier machines. And what does Milton tell him? Well, you know, don't worry about that. I figure you probably would, and that'll be all part of our whole program when we get it together, and that won't be done for another couple of weeks. But I got you. I appreciate that. But then I'm thinking right. to myself, holy crap, Milton. It was like the 29th of the month. You know, <laughs> I was getting ready to run out to the van. Where's your van at, Milton? Let me run out there and get the lease, get the guy to sign that so we could get it delivered by I mean, it's just nonsense. And when you think, sure. of, when you think about... You know, those sales philosophies and those strategies inside those dealerships, even in the manufacturing space, making this transition to this discipline where we're only going to sell based on a persona, we're only going to sell our stack, is just a tough road to hoe. But obviously, we can tell that you guys are doing real successful at it. Is there anything else that's, that's so unique that maybe you could share? I mean, we don't want you to give away your secret sauce, but, you know, how, how, what else can they, can they learn from what you guys are doing? Well, I've had, I've had to really rewire my brain, as well as Milton. He and I are he and I are a lot alike, but um, you have to be able to say no. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I talk to prospects every week that aren't a fit for Image Quest, mm -hmm. and while you'd like to have it all, um, it just doesn't work that way in this industry. So, my you know, if I could give a, a bit of advice, I would say learn how to say no. Um, and learn how to say no early. Um, and then when you find an account that is a fit for your stack and your company, uh, get the price out quickly to those folks and let them know uh, on average, you know, this is our, our average client is X dollars per user. Mm -hmm. right? You know, our average client bills $7,200 a month. Um, you got to get that out early. Um, or you'll spend a lot of time spinning your wheels mm -hmm. uh, trying to sell that prospect um, on your stack and um, on your offering if you don't get that out quick. Well, it's, almost, it's just a reverse process. You know, if you think about the sales processes around selling copy machines and print services or whatever solutions are around print, it's always about let us fit whatever we can into that customer's budget. If they don't want to buy new, we'll sell them used. If they can't afford a three-year lease, we'll do a five-year lease. And you're always, or, or let's change the machine and sell them something bigger that they don't really need, but because we can service it on a cost per copy cheaper, we'll overspec and oversell them. And when you look at IT, it's really the opposite. Right. You're trying to say, customers, you have to fit into our, you know, it's almost an arrogance to a degree, but if the customers don't fit into your profile, they're not a customer. And it doesn't matter what kind of revenue they're going yeah. to give you. I mean, you just have to say no. So that's great advice, Jay. So how has it been? Yeah, you kind of have to liken it to there. And, it, and, and I'll, I'll add one other thing, Ray, right? not to cut you off. I know it's hard to cut you off, right? No, that's all right. But, um, you know, in that, in that sales process, it's, you know, we kind of liken it to there. We're, they're interviewing us, but we, we're also interviewing them to make sure they're a good fit for us. Um, you know, they're, you know is, is their culture max match up with us? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very, very different process. Well, when they're paying you $7,200 a month for services, 
that's that's a pretty good account. You know, you're you're you're, you're absolutely, you're, and, and the persona of those customers really needs to match the persona and the delivery of ImageQuest 100. percent That was one of the reasons I was never a big fan of the master service provider or these national help desks because you can't. You know, your customers are driving the Lamborghini into the service lane and. You know, that same service lane is servicing someone with a Chevy, and the guy's waiting in line behind the Chevy. It just doesn't work that way. So, and you guys are just doing a fantastic job, and, I, and I'm going to look forward to talking more about this with you as time goes on. But, you know, how are, how are things now with, from a sales process as, we, as we're living in this crazy time of COVID? Well, I mean, I, I think I've worn pants uh, six times since February. I was surprised <laughs> they still fit. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of go to meetings, Ray. Um, I'm actually, we're starting to get back out in front of our customers. Um, I used to have a, a saying, uh, getting, uh, well, actually, this was one of my uh, first managers, he always used to say, you got to get out and get belly to belly with your customers. Yep. And um, while you can get a lot done via Zoom and go to meeting, um, there's no substitute for sitting uh, across the table from one of your clients. So, um, we are starting to get out and do more of that, and uh, I'm looking forward to the day where we uh, don't have to wear these masks anymore. Well, I think we're all looking forward to that. And Jay, it's been a great time talking to you. You know, uh, it's exciting what you and Milton and the whole team down there are doing. As a matter of fact, folks, I'm going to have the project manager, Matt Moses, on in a couple of weeks, and that'll be interesting to understand how they actually deliver this stuff to the marketplace. But it's a whole different world, but I think the biggest takeaway from the, today's video is this. The copier channel can do it. The executives in the copier channel can do it. The problem is, are they willing to, and are they willing to put the mindset toward it? And your proof, and Milton's proof, and testament that it can be done. So, Jay, anything you want to add before we end? I don't think so, Ray. I think you covered it. Okay, buddy. So did you. Hey, Jay, well, it's great seeing you again. Keep doing the good work because we all know this, my friends. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all tomorrow.